It's been a little over two months since my first gameplay video, and since then, there have been a ton of great updates to the game. In this supplemental video, I'll be going over all these new features and how they impact the gameplay of Blue Archive. As always, I've timestamped this entire video, so please feel free to skip around as you like. I hope this video will be a helpful addition to my gameplay series, but if I miss anything, I'll be sure to include it as a pinned comment below. Without further ado, let's jump into the newest features of Blue Archive. The most highly anticipated and exciting addition to Blue Archive is that players can now select up to three EX skills that will appear at the beginning of a fight. These three skills can be selected in the formation screen here, or inside the character selection menu. This is a huge improvement to combat, as it now allows players to more strategically select which skills they want to see at the beginning of battle. The game will even remember which skills you've selected if you keep the same team for other game modes, which is extremely helpful. You can also look at a snapshot of your team by selecting Unit Info, which is the new place where you can select a leader to represent your team. As a quick aside, <laughs> selecting a leader was, and still is, purely cosmetic. <laughs> it does not affect your battle stats whatsoever. There is also a separate menu where you can build and store your favorite team comps, which is really helpful if you find yourself using particular teams to complete different types of content. With the most recent updates, you can now add friends outside of clubs. This is great if your club is currently full or if you don't want to go through the hassle of adding someone to a club. You can access the friends menu by clicking here, then selecting friends and then manage friends. You can share the same assistance with your friends that you share in your club, which is yet another great way to help each other through different game content. If you want to add friends, you'll need to figure out your friend code and your server region. You can find your friend code by selecting this ID card option here within the friends menu, or you can find it by selecting your player info on the main screen and then selecting the ID card option from there. Your friend code will be an eight digit code displayed on your ID card. As a side note, the addition of these ID cards is absolutely adorable. I love that you can choose which character to display. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Super adorable addition to this already adorable game. Once you have your friend code, there is one other piece of information you'll need. Your server region. You can only add friends if they are within the same region, so you'll want to make sure that you and your friend are on the same server. You can find which region you're in by selecting this menu option then clicking account and scrolling down to version info. If your server name matches that of your friends, then go on ahead to the friend menu and search their friend code from there. If you're on the same server, but you're having trouble finding each other, make sure that you are actually searchable. You can check that here in the account settings menu under friend search settings. I mentioned it very briefly in my last video, but the Expert Permit Shop is a great new feature in the game. Every time you spend energy, you will also get Expert Permits, which can be exchanged for some wild rewards in this shop. Obtaining new limited characters from this shop is possible, although it's a little difficult. You'll need to slowly accumulate 120 of their LFs over time, and then you can only exchange them when that character's limited banner is re-released. But it is another possible way to obtain limited characters outside of rolling for them. If you do decide to just roll for limited characters, this shop is still great for bringing their star ranking up to four or five without spending generic elephs, and all the other rewards in this shop are honestly insane. In addition to generic elephs and experience books, you can also obtain equipment choice tickets, which are incredibly awesome items that let you obtain whatever equipment you want at different tier levels. These tickets range from tier two equipment all the way to tier five, which is amazing if you need particular equipment without grinding the different floors for them. Some characters that reach friendship level 20 can now unlock unique items. 
which not only gives them a stat boost, but also a brand new character story beat, all of which have been really fun to play so far. A lot of time and thought went into what unique items each character gets, so at the time of writing, only six characters currently have these unique items, but more characters will get them as time goes on. Two entirely new game modes have also been added, Allied Operation and Conquest. So far, both of these game modes have only appeared during the Summer Abydos and Hyakiyako events, but given that there are still assistant slots for them, these game modes will almost certainly return again in the future, so I'll go over them for anyone interested. In Allied Operation, you and the players all over the world contribute small increments of damage to take down groups of world bosses. You won't be directly fighting alongside other players, but rather players will independently contribute damage from their respective teams towards the health bar of the boss. There are three challenge modes that all contribute different amounts of damage, with each attempt costing a single allied operation ticket. You can have a total of five tickets at any time, and they recharge at a rate of about one per every six hours. Just like with Total Assault and the Joint Firing Drill, you can run mock battles ahead of time to test your team comps, but unlike these other modes, you can reuse the exact same team if you don't defeat a challenge mode the first time around, or if you want to run multiple modes, you can use the same team for those. I love this aspect of Allied Operation, as it makes it much more approachable for players who might not have a full roster that they can utilize for the event. Although the boss health bar is pretty substantial, you would be surprised how quickly the global server whittled it down. It was a ton of fun to check in every day to see how much damage everyone had done to the boss, and the rewards at the end were the equivalent of a 10 pull for each world boss defeated, and there were two of them, <laughs> so we got 20 pulls out of it. I'm looking forward to when they bring this mode back again in the future. It felt really satisfying to see the entire global server come together to bring these bosses down. The second new game mode is called Conquest, which is a lot more convoluted than Allied Operation, so bear with me as I walk through how this game mode functions. Now, the way that Conquest works is that enemies and bosses are scattered across several different floors of tiles, with the lowest level enemies labeled with a 1, and the highest level enemies labeled with a 3. You only need to defeat the enemies and bosses labeled with a 1 in order to progress through the floors, but if you want the extra challenge, you can fight the enemies labeled 2 and 3 as well. Your progression through the floors is limited by how many tiles you have occupied, which can be done by spending conquest tickets to claim an empty tile or challenge an enemy upon it. Conquest tickets are obtained by logging in daily or by operating some of these adorable little building tiles called bases. If a base tile doesn't produce conquest tickets, it will instead produce event currency, which can be exchanged with the event shop for a variety of rewards. Admittedly, as much as I enjoyed the exploration and challenge of this game mode, I do feel like its implementation was unfortunately quite confusing. Additionally, because the individual battles had bonuses for using students from particular schools, this game mode was more punishing for players who didn't have a large roster of characters and therefore couldn't take advantage of buffs from schools they were missing. On top of this, some schools have a wider cast of characters than others, which meant that even late game players sometimes struggled to complete the harder challenges. As a result, my assessment of Conquest is a little more lukewarm than Allied Operation, but I think there is enough potential that I hope the Blue Archive team refines this more in the future. In addition to these big game mode updates, there are also some really nice quality of life changes that have been made to the game. 
When you are on the main screen, there's this adorable little event notification icon that you can click on and get information about ongoing game events. The level cap was also raised to 80 and will continue to be raised in small increments throughout further content. And finally, my personal favorite update. The Momotalk menu now has a special notification whenever a character's birthday rolls around, which is an extremely cute way to celebrate the huge cast of characters in this game. There aren't any rewards associated with this new addition. I just think it's extremely cute, and I love seeing the quotes from characters whenever their birthdays happen. And with that, these are all the updates to the game at the time of writing. But as features are added, I'll make periodic updates just like this one to cover everything that has been added. I hope this video was helpful for learning about all the new additions to the game, as well as how to tackle some of the new game modes and future events. I'm still working on the next video for Lore Archive, but this felt prescient enough that I wanted to make a video covering all these new updates before too much time had passed. Thank you all for your patience and kind support as I work on these videos, and I'll keep sharing whatever knowledge I can about this extremely endearing game.